Hey, hey, hey everyone, Pitmick here from the CoinOps Discord channel uh, server. I just wanted to do a video on how you can add your own PC games uh, that you have installed uh, with your Steam client. Instead of just booting Steam and then having to navigate to that particular game within Steam itself, I'm going to show you a way of how you can add individual games to, to Next2 uh, that will boot through Steam. So you don't even have to boot Steam uh, and then choose within Steam. You can actually have the games individually listed on a game wheel like any other system. So I think that's the way a lot of people would prefer. Personally, that's the way I think I'd like it. So I'm going to show you how you can do it and it works fantastically. Um, if this is the first time you've visited my channel or you're a, a visitor who's come from another video, if you're enjoying what I'm teaching you how to do this for yourself, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Click the red uh, subscribe button and then make sure you put the little uh, bell, uh, click the bell next to it to show and to let you know when new video content is uploaded by myself about Next2. And I'll definitely be doing a video when Next2 is eventually released and then you'll know when it's out uh, as soon as you can get your hands on it. So, uh, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to show you uh, how you can do it. So, in an earlier video... I showed users how you can add Steam as the client and it will boot from next to into Steam and then you use your controller uh, in big picture mode in Steam to navigate to the game you want to uh, play. However, the way I prefer, that was that's quite easy to do, but the way I prefer is I want my uh, game PC games to be bootable from the game list in games windows, which is there. Now, if I press my A button, it's not going to let me in because I've got no uh, games uh, for Windows uh, set up in this version of Next2 I'm, I'm using. So I'm going to show you from scratch how you can do it. Uh, by the way, if I'm showing you how... I'm not going to show you how to get artwork. I've done a video on that already. So if you've not checked that out, please do have a look. at show, I'll show you how to do, get the logos and how to get covers and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you where to put files. So you can add your own uh, Steam uh, installed games and they will list in Next2 for you. So uh, I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to show you what you need. And uh, like I usually like to do this, so it makes it clear and easy for me. I'm going to show you what to do. And you can probably get an idea of what I've done here, but I'm just going to run through my list. So step one is you need to go into Steam first. I've decided we're going to go Steam first. And for me, when I install Steam, I think by default, I could be wrong, it goes into desktop mode. You don't want desktop mode. You need to set it up as big box mode. Uh, but that comes later. But you do need to go into Steam. And there's a reason for that. So let me just make sure I've not got it there yet. So I'm, going to I'm just going to boot Steam. And it says you have to verify all local files. So any games, uh, it's because I've detected I've got a controller on, it's thinking it wants me to use the big box, uh, big picture mode, which at this stage I don't, because I'm going to show you what you need to do. Now the game I'm going to add today is Blade Rush. I've already installed it on my PC, so I'm not going to waste time with the video on there. Um, but if I go on to right click on it and go properties, this is the job you must do for every game in Steam that you want to put as an individual game listing in next to you must do this this is important i know it takes a bit of time potentially but if you want to do it properly this is the way to do it you so you right click on the game you do properties it brings them up and you then click on local files here and you want to go verify integrity of game files because it's going to check that everything you need on your on your installation of that game is right and, and obviously up to date i presume so you click on that and uh, I don't think, did I do it? I don't know if I can, I can't remember if I actually did it before, but yet you can see it's not a particularly big game. It's only about three or 400 megs in size. So it's not big, as you can see, it doesn't take very long to verify. But if you've got games that are like 50 gigabytes or you know 20 gigabytes, you're gonna have to give, a little, give yourself a bit of time to go through them. But this is a very important step. Don't skip it, okay? Because it just might not work for you. It certainly didn't work for me when I didn't do this. And you do, do, you do need to do this for every game that's in your, uh, Steam client if you want to play them through on your locally on next through next two but if you do that which I've just done for um, blaze rush there I'm now going to close that and I'm just going to return to my spreadsheet so go into Steam desktop mode which I've just done not big box mode and verify all local files for all the installed Steam games on your PC Obviously, I've just done one, but you need to do that for all your games, okay, before you do. And then any new games you add in the future, just verify them when you've installed them, 
and then uh, the, you can then add them into the next two later down the line. So I'm just going to do one game, but you just repeat the process for each game you want to add. Okay, a bit of time, but it works. So uh, just be prepared that you might take a bit of time to, to, to verify all the install files. So the next step is you need the game ID. Now you can get that in a number of ways. You can get that from the website or you can get that from the actual client, Steam client, or you can get it from uh, the URL shortcut. Now, I'll start with the URL shortcut because when Steam installs games, it often gives you the choice to install a shortcut to the desktop. Now, on this occasion, I did, but it's not a shortcut to a program as such. It's actually, if you look at its properties, it's a URL, um, it's an internet shortcut, it's a URL shortcut, it's not a program shortcut. But the ID, look, there's the ID, in this case, 302710. That's how you can get the ID through the uh, shortcut URL, uh, URL shortcut, sorry. So you can get that, so you need to make a note of that number, okay? In fact, I will make a note of that number, so I'm just gonna copy that. I'll just put it on here, just so you can see. I'm just gonna put it there, okay? I don't need to know that now. So I'll just minimize it, I won't get rid of it, okay? The other, there are two other ways, and the, the other way is if you go to Steam and search up the game, and in my case, I'm going to look, um, Steam, I'm just going to type Blaze Rush and see if it actually comes up, but you could just do Steam. Oh, there you go, Store Steam, it might come up on there, let's have a look. Yeah, so you can see in the URL the address, look, it matches the number of the shortcut URL that I actually had on my desktop. That's the number of games, if I go to the... There, look, it actually is the same. So look, that's the same number. And the other way you can do it is actually within Steam. And on, um, if I click store and I search for that game, so there's three ways you can find this ID, whichever way suits you. And I'm gonna type in a blaze rush. And you can see there it's listed. So I click on it. And I've turned the URLs on within Steam client, so it shows the address. And again, look, there's the number that I've already copied and pasted. I think. Let me just see if I can find a setting that you need to turn that on, so you can see it there. So it's under settings. I'm trying. I can't remember uh, uh, which one it was because I did it so long ago. Uh, in it might be under interface. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it is. Display Steam URL address bar when available, and I've ticked it. So it means when I'm searching for a game in the Steam client, which I am here, it will actually list the URL up there in the just there, in that green green address there. So that's three ways to find the ID for every game. So what I've done is I set, I've set up a, a spreadsheet and just got the ID numbers of all the games that I've got in my Steam collection at the moment, and uh, I'll be able to add them in no time uh, using this method. So yeah, there's the three ways you can get them. So. And uh, let's just go back down to my, just cancel that. So I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and talk about each step. So I've got the ID numbers and I've showed you three different ways that you can get them. Okay, you can get the one that you need or the ones that you need for your collection, for each game in your collection. So you need one for each game. And they're all individual, they're all specific to that game. Step three. When you're done obtaining all those game IDs, which I've shown you how to do now in three different ways, you need to ensure that Steam starts in, uh, well, I put big box, but it's actually big picture mode. I should change that. Big picture mode. Okay, that's really what it's called. And you need to make sure that that is enabled. Uh, and the reason why is because if you don't set it up as big picture mode, it won't revert to next two when you quit Steam because actually it's not quitting Steam. It will actually keep it activated in your in your icon tray down here and next two thinks it's still running. So it won't get back to next two. It'll just be a blank, black, retro FE screen uh, that you won't see anything going on. So uh, I'll go back to Steam, which is sorry here, and I'll go to my Steam settings. And it was actually near the URL, so interface. And just above where I did the Steam URL address, I want to show, oh look, start Steam in big picture mode. Fantastic. I'm going to click that because that's important and that's okay. Right. I don't think I need it on anymore, so I'm going to exit it because I've saved it, the settings. Right, I've done that. I've now uh, got Steam to start in big picture mode when it reboots it shortly. Okay, that's set up. Next step, step number four. I need a shortcut to Steam. So I'm gonna go Steam, oops, typos. So Steam, open its file location, it'll take me to a shortcut. 
Um, I could copy that one, but I, I actually want to know where Steam is installed, just out of curiosity, even though I do know. But you probably would think, oh, you know what, I want to go to the folder where it actually resides. So it's actually in that particular folder. There, that's where it's installed. So I'm just going to come out of that. I could use that shortcut, but I'm going to use uh, this one. I'm going to show you how you can do it for that, where the actual uh, program is installed itself which is useful for other things as well. And there's steam.exe, that's what I want. And I'm gonna right click up button on it and I'm gonna create shortcut. And there it is. Now, I'm going to cut that out of there. I'm now going to go, just cancel that, I don't need that. I'm now going to go to the folder where I'm going to add a steam game directly. And I'm going to uh, paste it in. Now, that's the shortcut to steam. That's going to boot Steam. Obviously, I don't want it to boot just Steam. I want it to boot a specific game, a specific game. So, which is what I've done here. So, I'll just name that Steam for now, and I'll show you why it's different. Why you need to see this. So, if I go to properties of that shortcut, it's going to, as you can see there, it's going to it's going to run Steam.exe. Now, clearly, that's not going to be suitable to run a specific game. That's just going to boot Steam. I don't want that. So, I've used that shortcut. And I've simply copied it and then renamed it to whatever game. So I'm just going to make it up, made up game. And then I use the ID number for the next stage. So I go back to here. So I've got my shortcut. I've got it where I need it at the moment. I'm going to then transfer these files shortly. And the short place this new Steam shortcut into the next games for Windows link folder. And add dash app launch space and then the ID number, which is what I've done on Blaze Rush. So, to so the shortcut properties for that particular game. So you rename the editor shortcut to the name of the game you're adding, and obviously all your artwork and video need to be the same as the shortcut you're adding for the game. And you just repeat this process, but I'll show you Blaze Rush. So, you saw earlier, Steam just boots Steam. Well, this won't just boot Steam, it will boot that specific game. And you can see here, that's where the exit for Steam ends. Then I've got a space after the uh, inverted commas or quotes. Then I've got a space, dash, app launch, space, and then the game ID number that I made a note of from the Steam URL or the URL shortcut from here. So again, I'll show you there. Properties, you see, that's what I need. And I put it at the end and I click OK. And if I'd not already done so, I'd name it the game I'm adding to my collection. Uh, for that blaze rush okay now i have got others but i'm just going to use blaze blaze rush as the example so now i've used the id of the number of the game i don't need that i don't need to save that then i go into collection so i've got the shortcut for the game and i then need to add it according to the instructions i've got here into the next games for windows lnk folder so let's go let's get blaze rush yeah there it is i'm just going to copy it i want to keep that there for now uh next games for windows lnk i'm going to put it there and then, just like other things, we need artwork. Games for Windows L and K is where the collection is. I'm just going to get that. Uh, games for Windows L and K, because that's used. That's the shortcuts way of adding these games. And I'm adding a shortcut for the this specific game in Steam. Games for Windows L and K. Medium underscore artwork. Medium underscore artwork. This is not a cabinet game. I'm not going to add that. But I have got a cover. I've got a number of games I wanted to add. But I'm just going to use Blaze Rush. So I'm going to copy Blaze Rush into cover because that's the cover for it in there. I've got a logo for it. I'm going to add a logo for it, Blaze Rush. And uh, just a quick one, if, if, if you're not sure where to get logos from, I definitely recommend this website uh, in the games database for launch box. You can find all sorts of logos in there. Uh, I've got done a video on how to do all this, so just letting you know, uh, but it's well worth using to get your logos from. Um, so I've put the logo in and I'm gonna now add a video. And the video is Blaze Rush there. And I've edited these videos to suit me. And the ratio is right for the uh, video display. So the 4.3, I've made them so they suit and look fine for that. And uh, they're all good. So that should be enough. But let me just check the instructions. So I've put the Steam shortcut for Blaze Rush in that folder. The shortcut actually has the uh, space app launch, space the game ID to the shortcut properties. Now I'll just, again, I'm just gonna check that because I wanna make sure that is absolutely right in that shortcut. So there it is, Blaze Rush, properties, right click on it, properties. Yep, app launch and, the, and then a space and then the number of the game. 
brilliant that's perfect um and then i've added i renamed it the shortcut to blaze rush yeah uh, to add more games you simply copy the edit so if i were to add another game and i had the id number all i would have to do is simply copy it made up game change the name of the game i want to add from my steam collection and then just edit the properties and put a different game id there that matches the game url in steam so you don't you don't need to make create one shortcut and then you just edit every shortcut you want to suit your game um you do have to do that manually i don't believe you can do that very quickly or easily in any other way so you would have to do that manually so you've got lots of games it might take a bit of time but you know it could be you know i think it'd be worth it because it looked mint it looked ace uh in next two but yeah that's all you have to do so i'm just going to delete that because i don't need that one if it should delete for me come on i pressed the delete button i don't know why it's not doing it there we go right so uh, back to the instructions. So we just repeat that until we've got all our games added with the correct IDs. Step six, add your logo, video, and optional cover, which I've done. And it goes in the collections, games for Windows, LNK, forward slash medium underscore outward folders. So video, logo, cover, etc. right folders. I've already done the bit to do with being in, booting Steam in big picture mode, which is perfect. So now I need to boot coin ops, and I should be able to see the game, and I should be able to boot it directly and it will initially boot via big box mode that's what you've chosen it and you know it's in big box mode because it has a pixelated steam intro video which i don't mind um and just be a bit patient because um it might take a little bit of time to boot directly into the game from there but then when it's done i'll show you how you can get back to next two but being in big picture mode is vital it must be in big picture mode to, to work in next two effectively so hopefully now i've added everything um the game should be listed in the games for windows um system uh list so if i go to sorry i'll make it quicker for myself i'll go there it is games for windows which so should be listed here fingers crossed and there we go it is so i've got my logo i've got my cover with the background image and i've got my video that i created and i've added it to the build it's all working so now hopefully steam's going to boot into big picture mode i think if i remember rightly i've done it and i press a and the game should now boot for me and if it comes up with a pixelated vid, yes, it's in big picture mode. Awesome. So it's working. Now, it's it detected I've got a 360 controller connected wirelessly, which is fantastic. The game might take a few seconds to boot, but it is going to be. It looks like it's just booted to that. There, there you go. So it's booted directly to the game via Steam from Next2. Absolutely awesome. So there we go. That's it. That's basically it. So I'm not going to be um playing this game but i just want to show you that it's uh it's done so just go into the game and i'll just quit it okay so that is basically it good little game this worth a go so i'm going to exit that now as i've done on my other video obviously exits back to the steam big picture mode client so you need to then use your controller this is why it needs to be in big picture mode so you can use your controller uh go to the power icon at the top press that don't use exit big picture because steam will still be activated and you won't be able to get back to the next two game uh, list so go to exit steam you do that it should take you back to next two fingers crossed and there you go and you can choose another game in your list of any you've added okay guys so i hope that's useful and informative for you um it, you don't forget to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button uh, below and then click the little bell to say to be notified of any new videos and content i upload Appreciate all the kind comments. I hope that's been useful. I'm going to be doing this for my build when we get around to doing it. And uh, I hope you like it. All the best. Cheers, guys. Take care.